Hello, welcome back to TCG Dreamland. We've got Ravnica Remastered today. This is going to be fun. I think the set looks pretty cool. So, I want to show you something real quick. I want to talk about Print Run, because every time they do one of these sets with serialized cards, you can roughly calculate how many collector booster packs they've made. So, if you look here... Before, they always said serialized foil card in less than 1% of boosters. Now they say in 1% of boosters, exactly, which is very interesting. So, given the fact, I believe, if I'm remem remembering correctly, there's 54 different serialized cards, and there's 500 of each. So you do 54 times 500, and then divide by 0 0.01, and that gives you some ridiculous number that's like 3 million something. And then you divide it by 12, and you get the number of pack equivalents in booster boxes is 266,000 and, and change. So 266,000, if I'm remembering correctly, is actually less than Brothers War, I'm pretty sure. So that means that they are reducing print runs, or at least for this set, they reduced the print run a little bit. Because I think for Brothers War, there was over 300,000. Also, these are backwards packs. So the serialized card will be this one. Not in this pack, though. Life from the Loam. All right. Stomping Ground. Full art. Nice. Sword of the Peruns. Not a bad card. These are all just rares, no mythics yet. I do kind of want to keep track of Shocklands, though. All right, Expansion and Explosion. We've got Persistent Petitioners. These are just commons and uncommons now. Got some Guild Gates. All right, so yeah, you calculate it out. It's 266,000 and change booster boxes, the equivalent. That's how many packs, collector booster packs, they printed for this set. So, serialized. Nope. Birds of Paradise, though. That's nice. Retro foil. Yeah, they use the Japanese pack, so the foiling has kind of a matte finish. It's not, like, super-duper glossy, like how the uh, USA printed cards are. Utvara. Oh, that might be the anime. Or is it just full art? Oh, no, yeah, right there. Because it has a Japanese artist at the bottom. That's also a mythic. All right, Blazing Archon. And then Blazing Archon again, but a different border. And in foil, which is cool. Golgari Thug. I think this slot can be like, it's like a wild card slot. Two arms. Just go through the back of the pack relatively quickly all the bulk in the same pile. All right, so anyways, what I was getting at was that it looks like they reduced print run a little bit. I think there was over 300,000 box pack equivalents with Brothers War, so there are fewer packs that they printed. Chromatic Lantern, very nice. Very cool. I do want to talk about Chromatic Lantern. I was debating whether I should do it in this video or the next one, though. Karn's Bastion, that's cool. Assure and Assemble, Krenko's Command. All right, and then just the Commons and Uncommons. Terramander, Band Together. All right, these are just all Commons and Commons, right? Yes. All right, moving on. You know what? Since I, since I pulled a Chromatic Lantern, I'll talk about Chromatic Lantern. Chromatic Lantern, there is a serialized Chromatic Lantern in this set. And this is the second time that there's been a serialized Chromatic Lantern. If you remember from Brothers War, the uh, schematic artifacts, there was a whole bunch of them. I forget how many it was. I think it was like 70-something. But uh, in Brothers War, the schematic artifacts were serialized, and there was a serialized schematic. Dark Confidant's a good card. Nice. There was a Chromatic Lantern serialized card, so now this is the second time there's been a serialized Chromatic Lantern. So that does confirm that they will print 
multiple variants of the same card and serialize them because you had the old border schematic looking one out of 500 in Brothers War and now you have the old border different artwork one that's in this set and there's 500 of those so that begs the question seal of the guild pact that begs the question does that mean chromatic lantern serialized cards are worth less because there's actually a thousand of them or because it's two different variants and there's 500 of each are they just still the same you know what i mean like now that there's another serialized chromatic lantern is the, is the other chromatic lantern serialized card going to go down in price because there's now double the supply or because it's a different artwork far seek uh, is it going to you know remain basically the same price and then the ones from this set are just going to match the ones that were from brothers war so that's the question it's all it's all about what the collectors think that's the only people buying the serialized ones you know so do the collectors consider it an entirely different card? It's just 500 of a different card? Or do they, do they also consider it Chromatic Lantern? And there's now 1,000 serialized Chromatic Lanterns. Aurelia is a very nice card. The anime Aurelia. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. Rakdos, Lord of Riots. Crypt Ghast in the regular border. Still good card. All right, Demir Guildgate. Uh, two of them in different borders. Back to back. Gobhobber. Titanic Brawl. All right, we're on the second half of the box now. We are seven minutes into the video, so we're good on time. I could even speed it up a little bit. I know when I talk, I kind of slow down quite a bit. Cloudstone Curio. That is an anime borderless Cloudstone Curio. That's not one I recognize off the top of my head, so it's probably not insanely expensive. Tomic, didn't we already have one of these? We had a... There's a lot of anime cards. All right, Godless Shrine. Oh, there we go. It's old Border. Shockland. I forgot. I said I was going to keep track of Shocklands, and then I totally forgot because I was talking about stuff. Let me... I should check just real quick. Guild Gates. Eyes everywhere. Whoa, what is that thing? Debtor's Transport. Interesting. Burning Tree Vandal. Okay, I do want to check if that's a Guild Gate. Guild Gate. Just looking for lands, guild gate, guild gate, guild gate. Okay, I do believe that is just our second, that's a guild gate. That is just our second shock land. All right, so two shock lands for the box so far. On to the next pack. A lot of empty space at the top of these. It's kind of weird. All right, serialized. Nope. Godless Shrine, though. Nice. Cool. Foil Borderless. And a Borderless Birds of Paradise. Ooh, uh, anime artwork Birds of Paradise. Very nice. Cloudstone Curio. Oh, I do recognize that one. So I guess Cloudstone Curio is actually not bad. It's just that the full art one's probably not as good as the old border. People like old border ones. We got Yeva. All right, and then Bulk. Breeding Pool. Oh, Breeding Pool is a shock land, right? Yeah. Regular border foil shock lands. That brings us up to four now. Coiling Oracle had that relatively recently. All right, serialized. 
Nope, Supreme Verdict. Not a bad card. Hallowed Fountain, there we go. Wow, we're actually getting a lot of Shocklands. Brings us up to five. Pariah's Shield. Arclight Phoenix. All right. Rakdos Signet, that's cool. Homing Lightning. And Cloudfin Raptor. Three packs remaining. And serialized, nope. Bottled Cloister, interesting. That's a Pokemon. This is the Pokemon crossover. Cloudstone Curio, another one. This time non foil. All right, Massacre Girl. Right, and then just the bulk. The Guild Gate. I think there's a Guild Gate in every pack. Basilica Guard, Sewer Shambler. Tajik, Legion's Edge. We've got Hellkite Tyrant, Anime, Borderless, cool. Cinder Vines, that's cool. And Stitch in Time, Guild Gate in Foil, Blade Brand, Morning Thrall, Thrall. Wild Canter. Last pack for the box. We had quite a few good cards. I don't know if this equates to the price of a box. These are going for around $250, $260. Got Master of Cruelties. That is an Old Border Mythic. And Massacre Girl with the anime artwork. All right, Tesa. And Teferi. That is also a mythic. Cool. So yeah, quite a few mythics. Crackling Drake. Utopia Sprawl. Guild Mage. Bulwark Giant. All right, so not a bad box at all. We've got five Shocklands in no particular order. We got Braiding Pool, Old Border Foil, Stomping Grounds, Full Art. Hallowed Fountain Full Art, Godless Shrine Full Art Foil, and a Godless Shrine Old Border. Very nice. We also got two different Birds of Paradise. This one is kind of expensive, actually. So that was pretty good. Lots of Shocklands, lots of good cards. We got a Chromatic Lantern. What else is good? I recognize some of these up here. I think... These ones are some of the best ones off the top of my head. Very nice box. So remember to subscribe. Once we hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to do giveaways. So unfortunately, at the time of this recording, we are not at 1,000. But uh, I don't know, maybe one of these? That's kind of how I'm... I'm planning on doing it is I'm going to give away one of the cards from the opening. So if we had been at a thousand subscribers for this video, someone would be getting this Birds of Paradise retro foil. Very nice. Or maybe the Aurelia. That one's also very nice. Not sure. Those are both great cards. One of those someone would be getting. But anyways, make sure to subscribe. Once we hit a thousand subscribers, giveaways. So one more box also. Ravnica Remastered. If you want to see that, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys then.